This is the West Remote Receiver package. And uh, as we were working on it, tuning it up, we discovered it would not tune up properly to uh, 20 watts or 25 watts. We were pulling about 4 watts, where we should be at 20, 25 watts at least. I have checked the exciter, and it is pushing about 1 watt, a little over 1 watt, which isn't stellar, but not bad. So I am now looking at the culprit is most likely here in the power amplifier. This UHF amplifier was built by Hamtronics, is a three-stage amplifier and takes about one watt and puts out about 30 to 35 watts. Okay, I'm going to use this signal tracer now to look at the input. And uh, we have about uh, two and a half volts. Let's go past this first stage and look at its output. And uh, we have about nine volts, so obviously it is amplifying fine. Let's go to the next stage and look at its output. And we are getting 13. Not a stellar increase, but it is an increase. And let's go down to the final amplifier, the uh, final transistor, and see what it looks like. And uh, we have about 11.3, um, 13.6. Uh, that doesn't look any better than uh, the uh, transistor before it, the output of the transistor before it. So we are suspecting that maybe this transistor is not performing like it should. On each of these transistors, I've been looking at the collector as close as I can get. And uh, conveniently, uh, this coil supplies voltage to the collector and it's a good place to attach my probe. Likewise in the next stage, same coil right at the collector. And the final stage anywhere along this output is good to pull a uh, signal reference. In order to test the transistor further, I am going to disconnect the power supply off the collector and the power supply coil off the base. Since everything else is connected by capacitors, uh, there is no connection to the circuit other than to those two points. So by pulling that, I will isolate the transistor pretty much because the capacitors rarely go bad, these uh, little mica uh, capacitors. In order to check the transistor, I'm going to use the diode check on this Beckman. An NPN transistor can be thought of as two diodes connected on the base side of the transistor. Each diode goes out from the base to the collector and one to the emitter. So we can test a transistor using a diode checker on a ohmmeter. In this case, let's uh, start and uh, we'll put the uh, positive side on the base. And let's check the com collector side. Here we have 0.67 volts, that is good. And now let's go over to the emitter. And we have 0.7, which is also good. Again, having the transistor unhooked from power on both the base and the collector, We'll do a resistive test, and uh, normally uh, there should no be any resistance between the collector and the emitter, or the base and the emitter. And let's check and see what we got. There's the collector, and here's the emitter. Uh, overload, okay, no, uh, no resistance to speak of. Let's do uh, the emitter to the base and see what we've got. Uh oh. 4.99, 5. Uh, should be 5 kilo ohms there. That's not good. 
Given that the transistor diode characteristics look good, I am suspecting either this capacitor or this capacitor has got a resistive element to it. Um, this particular site came out of Eaton and uh, originally it had been damaged by uh, mice living in it. So if any of the urine, etc., got into these open air type capacitors, they're mica capacitors, but uh, it's certainly open to any liquids getting in, that could have created a uh, resistance. So we are going to disconnect these two uh, capacitors one at a time and uh, measure its resistance and see if we can track down the 5 kilo ohm resistance. If we remove both of these and it still has 5 kilo ohms to the uh, base, then we'll look at these other uh, capacitors in the, uh, in the system as well. And um, if all four of them are good, uh, then we can suspect that there's something maybe amiss in the transistor itself. Okay, we've got uh, a uh, connection on the emitter side or the ground and you can see the meter reflects that and um, now we're going to test these two capacitors right here and right here. First capacitor, no, res no resistance. Second capacitor, no resistance. Now let's try the uh, the baseline again, ah, the resistance is still there. So we'll go and check these two capacitors next. One of the things that need to be noted about this transistor is that the base is this thick extension here, while the collector is the thin one at the top. You'd think that the power coming off the collector would be uh, down here on the thick one and not coming off this little tiny one up at the top. Seems backwards, but that's the way it is. I removed these capacitors and tested them, and both of these capacitors had uh, complete open, so uh, they were not a fault of the uh, five kilo ohms that we were reading. After removing the capacitors and then lifting the base trim tab here, if we connect to it with this probe that's hooked to the volt ohmmeter, we see we have the 5 kilo ohms uh, showing up on the meter. So the transistor is what is providing the 5 kilo ohms. This is abnormal. We are going to go ahead and uh, remove this uh, transistor and uh, install uh, a new one in its place and see, uh, see what we get. Okay, I'm going to use some solder wick to remove the solder from these capacitors. And for the harder part, I am going to try to lift these uh, capacitor ends where they connect to the uh, circuit board. A lot of problem because they're kind of stiff. There we go. We got one of them lifted. And we'll pull it on back up a little bit so I can get to the other one underneath. Get down there and get it soldered. All right, it's clear now. And then uh, we will go further and uh, start unsoldering the capacitors uh, themselves. All right, we put the heat to the uh, capacitor and it just uh, popped right off. And we're going to do the same to uh, this capacitor. I'll hook it here and help pull on it. Once the whole chassis gets hot enough, it pulls right off like that and uh, so now we have uh, open area to work on the transistor itself and we'll use this pick and we'll continue on by heating up each of these areas causing this to loosen up 
now one of the emitter leads and we'll start pulling it high and since we're not going to reuse it we don't care if we bend it way out yeah likewise on this side on the other side as well let's get it going we'll scrape underneath and pull it up and out of the way do that on all sides there's four emitter leads and they are just solder to the ground of the circuit board and here we go now all we have to do is unscrew the uh, two screws and we'll have that uh, ready to be pulled out and finally we got to unsolder the collector and pull it off the circuit board and there we go all right we pulled the screws out of the transistor and it yeah it's loose and uh, we'll pull it right out and we're going to clean up the board just a little bit here these uh, foils seem a little loose on the board uh, they probably will not hurt and we'll clean this bottom area out as well this is loose too it's not really good but uh, when we strap it down with the transistor on top of it it'll uh, it'll sit okay there heat has uh, caused it to uh, uh, come up like that we're gonna have to clean this up good so we make sure that we're going to get a good connection there when we resolder all right now we need to prep with some uh, oxide uh, on the back side of the transistor for heat conduction does need a lot just a little bit all right now we'll fasten the screws back and uh, hold it in place well before we solder it that will give us good heat sink capability while we're soldering on the leads next I will apply some of this liquid solder flux onto the transistor leads on top and bottom underneath Next, I'm going to seat everything down as far as I can get it to start off with. And we'll come back with the uh, soldering iron and, and start putting solder on it and uh, locking it down. All right, let's go for it. I'm doing the emitter leads first that'll help give us more protection to the base lead and the collector lead to keep heat off of it all right let's go for it and there we are all right it's time to see if we can get these uh, capacitors soldered back and I always start by just tacking the lead first then it's when it's stable then I could start soldering on the main body of the capacitor
And we'll allow it to heat up a bit and push it down. And the solder underneath of it is heated up as well. All right, we got a good uh, solder connection there, it looks like. That's about all we need. All right, let's go ahead and try tacking this one in. Get it straight as we can. Hold it down and tack it in. All right, it's tacked. Now let's get the body like we did uh, before. We'll push down on the back edge as we're heating up the body. And get it on this side as well. And good solder joint on both sides, it looks like. Excellent. All right, we got the surface mount capacitors all mounted back in and soldered down. And let's uh, solder this one this uh, coil in that uh, feeds the collector voltage. This is an RF choke. All right. Got one more to go here. This one goes over in the base and uh, feeds the base voltage. And there we go. All right, let's put in the variable capacitor. And uh, please note that this screw is attached to this metal rail, which goes down the back side to ground. You want your screw to always be on the ground side of things and not on your hot RF hot side, because if you go to tune the screw with a metal object, it's going to detune your circuit because that metal object becomes part of the capacitor. So always keep the screw at ground potential on the ground side of things. So let's go ahead and tack that in fairly easy to do. Next we're going to drop the series pass variable capacitor into place and uh, solder it in to the board. All right, that completes the reconstruction of the board. All right, we fired it back up and we got just a little bit more power than, well, I don't know, even about the same or just a little bit more. Let's try tweaking a little bit. This output adjust doesn't do an awful lot. And this one does a little bit and we got it peaked up and let's go back to these and re-peak these these haven't been peaked yet since we reinstalled things aha there we go 32 watts so far that's cranking it on and we've got that one peaked up. Let's go back and peak the output. See if we get anything different. Now, about right, right there. Yeah, loading's really light on this one. 35 watts, practically. All right, I'm gonna turn the voltage down just a little bit. So that we don't Go much higher than 30, 30 watts. There's no need to go any higher than that. So that's uh, that's a good that success. Just for future record, uh, we're running 12.65 volts and getting almost 30. I'm going to drop it down to 12.5 even. And uh, at that point. Uh, We'll call it uh, good at about uh, 29 watts.